We are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. The illegal blockades have highlighted the fact that crowdfunding platforms and some of the payment service providers they use are not fully captured under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. Our banks and financial institutions are already obligated to report to the Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Centre of Canada, or FinTrack. As of today, all crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use must register with FinTrack and they must report large and suspicious transactions to FinTrack. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. This is about following the money. This is about stopping the financing of these illegal blockades. We are today serving notice. If your truck is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. So you're confirming that accounts have been frozen, both personal and corporate, but you're not releasing the information. And the actual follow-up is, um, I'm just wondering whether the bank accounts will be targeted of individuals who donated to the Give, Send, Go and the GoFundMe campaigns. Are they considered designated people under the Emergencies Act, meaning that their credit cards could be cut and financial services are targeting them as well? Okay, so the names of both individuals and entities as well as crypto wallets have been shared by the RCMP with financial institutions and accounts have been frozen and more accounts will be frozen. Uh, crowdfunding platforms and payment service providers have started the registration process with FinTrack. Uh, in terms of the specifics on whose accounts are being frozen, uh, you now have the regulations. The financial service providers have those regulations as well. And they, working with law enforcement, will be making the operational decisions. Just over a month ago, the current Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, imposed another VAX requirement on Canadian and U.S. truckers entering Canada. Those who did not have their shots up to date had to quarantine for two weeks upon arrival in Canada, effectively putting truckers who did not want jabs out of business. As a response, early this month, a trucker freedom convoy in Canada took shape. Truckers arrived from all destinations and converged on Ottawa, the capital of Canada, one particular convoy stretched for 45 miles and included thousands of trucks. Yet a smaller group of about 100 trucks paralyzed downtown Ottawa for the last few weeks. Some trucks even closed the Ambassador Bridge between Detroit and Windsor, Ontario, the most heavily traveled border crossing between the U.S. and Canada, where about 30% of all commerce between the two major economies crosses. It has since been cleared by authorities, with over two dozen arrested in doing so. As I speak these words at the moment, they're already arresting people in downtown Ottawa. But what's most insidious and shocking is Canada's recent usage of their Emergency Powers Act, which effectively gives their federal government the right to freeze anyone's capital they deem as part of this ongoing protest against injection mandates. An attempt to get Canadians to begin pulling their capital out of major banks seems to have begun online at least, and there were reports of a handful of major Canadian banks going simultaneously offline briefly this past week. 
Other astute onlookers point out other obvious dark growing implications of this financial freezing out precedent for our collective futures basically anywhere in the world. Central bank digital currencies or CBDC systems are certainly inbound and they're coming to over 90% of the world's global domestic producing nations. These full central bank controlled payment systems will most certainly be used for massive data collection and attempting to gain further control of nations' respective citizenries through new age monetary policy tools gained. Hello there, on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson with a quick SD Bullion market update. Before we go further, please smash the like button so other sound money stackers can also see this content. And be sure to subscribe to our SD Bullion channel so you can get our latest market coverages and also a chance at winning incredible bullion giveaways like this one. Raise your hand if you like free stuff. We were going to give away a free tube of the brand new 2022 Silver Eagle coins. Then we said, nah, make it 25 tubes. SD Boolean is at it again with the Silver Eagle Monster Box sweepstakes. How many coins are in a monster box? Let's just say one lucky participant is going to be showing off their best celebratory dance moves with 500 shiny new silver bird friends. So head over to sdboolean.com backslash sweepstakes for your chance to win. Click the link below to enter our new 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin type 2 giveaway contest. And good luck to all of you who take part. Another strong week of trading to upsides for the monetary precious metals. The gold spot price enjoyed its best weekly rise in the last 9 months, closing just under 1900 an ounce for the week. The silver spot price also finished slightly higher, though it's yet to fully confirm and follow gold's strength of late. As a result, the gold-silver ratio ends the week slightly up at 79, whereas in early June 2021, the last time gold was near 1900 an ounce, the gold-silver ratio was around 67 and the silver spot price was above 28 an ounce. If gold somehow continues its move to the upside, it will be interesting to see how silver responds. This week we have some updates on underlying physical bullion import-export data for the last month January 2022. Swiss gold exports to China last month were the largest seen since late 2016, back when the then gold spot price dipped below 1200 an ounce. Thus far in 2022, the Chinese see sub 12,000 yuan an ounce gold as perhaps good value, judging by their heavy gold bullion buying to begin this year. Turning to silver bullion physical flows, according to Metals Focus and India Trade Data, the nation had a strong month of January 2022 imports for silver. They imported over 777 metric tons, or roughly 25 million ounces, last month alone. The chart that you see here on the left is only updated through November 2021, but you can see where 777 tons in one month stacks up compared to the last 10 years of monthly data. And while we don't expect that to become the norm for their average monthly silver imports for this year 2022, Recall that during the 2010s, India imported over 172 million ounces on average per year. And the nation imported less than half of their average over the last two wedding season lockdown years, 2020 and 2021, when averaged out. So it's fair to say that there is pent up silver demand in India, and we should continue seeing robust Indian silver bullion import data to come. There was a good bit of celebrating this week for gold bulls upon seeing the Japanese yen gold price break out and reach new all-time highs beyond 218,000 fiat yen per troy ounce of gold. You can see the massive cup and handle breakout here, and that covers this full fiat currency era for the yen. And massive cup and handles can be seen not just there, but also for gold and silver in the fiat US dollar chart as well, juxtaposed here. And what's fascinating for me is how much further silver has to go in Japanese yen before getting anywhere near its 1980 high still. And, and silver closed this week around 2,750 per ounce. And the land of the rising sun needs to see its current silver spot price multiplied by a factor of over four just to see its over 40 year high reached in January 1980. Turning again to US inflation expectations, a recent late Last month, Gallup poll reveals nearly 80% of those polled believe inflation is going to continue going up. And while inflation is typically the end result of fiat monetary expansions, the risk here is a runaway psychological expectation which becomes very hard to break without crashing financial markets and kicking off a recession. 
Here's an updated chart you may have seen before, but it's updated through December 2021. Of course, it uses rigged U.S. government BLS CPI data. And it shows, regardless of all the offshoring and the increases in productivity over the last two decades and a year, the largest price escalations have been in the things U.S. citizens absolutely need. To close this week, we'll have a listen to Berkshire Hathaway's commentary on inflation this past week with Charlie Munger speaking to Yahoo Finance. At 98 years old, the successful stock investor uh, sucked the air out of the room with a diatribe of real historic risks to runaway price inflations, historically speaking. Have a look and a gallows humor laugh at the awkwardness of the conversation. You mentioned inflation, Charlie, and the stock market is, is down a bit this year, maybe because of inflation, uh, also the tensions in Russia and Ukraine. Maybe we'll get to that in a second. But I want to ask you specifically about inflation. Are we looking at a prolonged decline um, in the markets because of inflation? Is inflation on the rise? And should we be concerned about it? Well, let me take that in the reverse order. Inflation is a very serious subject. You can argue it's the way democracies die. When democracy dies in Latin America, inflation is a big part of it. So it's a huge danger once you've got a populace that learns it can vote itself money. It, it, if you overdo it too much, you ruin your, your civilization a lot. And so, of course, it's a big, long-range danger. If you look at the Roman Republic, and even after they went to an empire with an absolute ruler, they inflated the currency steadily for hundreds of years, and eventually the whole damn Roman Empire collapsed. So it's the biggest long-range danger we have, probably, apart from nuclear war. Is it something investors need to be worried about, specifically when it comes to growth stocks right now? Well, I think the safe assumption for an investor is that over the next 100 years, the currency is going to zero. That's my working hypothesis. Wow. Well, that'll be a different type of environment, won't it? A very dangerous environment. And what about the brought in Hitler was, was the combination. Was what brought in Hitler was the combination of the Weimar inflation, where they utterly destroyed the savings of the middle class in Germany, followed by the Great Depression. It was a one-two punch. And Hitler came in, crazy demagogue, with 40% of the votes, and pretty soon we had a dictator hell-bent for world war. So the history is not pleasant. And Germany was a very advanced and civilized nation, the, the Germany that Hitler took over. I always well, say that the interesting well. thing about that was little Albert Einstein, a little Jewish boy, got his entire primary education with the insistence of the Catholic Church in Germany. Now that is a very civilized nation. So if you let your nation deteriorate too much, what you get is a Hitler. We proved it. I only wish they had asked Charlie about how growth stocks perform under totalitarianism. And it was a fitting dark humor clip for the week, especially the way things are trending. I'll bet you would also take the under on his 100-year working hypothesis. The good news remains, prudent private bullion insurance remains relatively cheap and available for now. That's all for this week. As always, to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion-related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.